Thanks very much, Phoenix. And uh, we're a, a very special guest tonight, obviously, on the uh, the Crowcast, um, Jared Lyons tonight. How are you tonight, Jared? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you guys? Very well, and thanks very much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Um, look, the, uh, when we do interview, we, we try and um, not go uh, into uh, too much detail in terms of the game and, and all the rest of it. We, we do like to know what's happening with, uh, with you guys, though, and we hear that uh, actually you're pretty uh, hot on the golf course. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I, I don't mind uh, my golf outside of footy. It's, um, yeah, it's probably a little hobby of mine I do to, I suppose, get away from the game and, and yeah, get my head out of footy for a little while. What are you playing off, mate? Uh, at the moment, I'm off about five. Oh, beauty! Um, playing yeah. at uh, playing at Glenelg or uh, somewhere else? Uh, I played Glenelg today, actually, but um, I'm a member at Grange. Ah, oh, beautiful. Yeah, it's just opposite the club, which is easy. If you're playing off five, you sound like you're understanding it a bit there, and and we understand there was a bit of a player coach um, tournament that went on there. How did you go playing against the coach? Um, yeah, we played one hole at Glenelg, and he got me. Um, he got me by a shot. So, Pike, he's a, yeah, he's a pretty good golfer. Um, I think he's been playing for many years. He's off about scratch now. So, he's probably the uh, yeah the best golfer at the club at the moment, which is um, something yeah something to catch for me, I guess. In light of that, um, Jared, was it strategic to hit towards the water to make sure you might get a game? <laughs> yeah, just make sure I give him um, <laughs> give him a confidence boost, I guess. <laughs> but no, I, I knew I was going to hit it in the water as soon as I said it. So, <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. It was good fun. It was a good day, actually, the Crows golf day. It's always good fun. Is that something that's important, Jared, in terms of getting away from the uh, the pressures of the game to, to be able to get out there and, and make that um, um, you know, bit, of, bit of relaxation for yourself and, and also just enjoy a, a bit of each other's company uh, out in the golf course in an environment like that? Yeah, I, I think it's important as players. Like it's it's very easy to get stuck in the sort of twenty four seven footy world, I guess. And and these days, there's so much scrutiny on the game and all the media and everything. It's it's nice just to have something to, I guess, take your head away from the game. I mean, I know Sloaney loves going surfing, and yeah, there's a lot of different blokes just enjoy doing different things, and yeah, it's just something that. It keeps you busy, and, and uh, obviously footy's not going to be there for your whole life, so you've got to enjoy the other things, which is, uh, yeah, golf something that could probably play to them about 70, so, yeah, it's good to get into. Now, just getting into the, the footy from the weekend, but there's one thing that we've noticed, um, but it seemed to start last year, but it's gone to another level this year, seems to be the composure of the team, and I think a perfect example was, you on the weekend, that left-hand handball you did to Atkins to set up that goal. Is it something specific that's been worked on at training or is it more organic due to what we've noticed, which is like with Walshie and Campo and now Park seeming to have this quite calm demeanour on game day? Uh, I guess it's something, um, composure is something you're sort of almost born with, I guess. It's, it's sort of hard to teach, but I mean, we're just we've just worked on our skills a lot more, and I guess when you hit targets, it makes it look like you can pose rather than the ball hitting the ground, and then it's, it's such a scramble. So we worked hard on our on our skills. I mean, last year I think we were seventeenth for kicking and handballing in the comp, so that was a big focus for our preseason. And I think if you can keep the ball in the body, it just gives you a lot more time to um yeah to find your next next player and, and move the ball down the field. Good you think that then builds on with you working on the skills that you think that there's this trust going on that you know what everybody else can do, whether that's kind of leading into that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, I, I think we sort of work on, everyone sort of works on their 80-20 kick, which is just a, an 80% kick where the, like in my eight times out of 10, you'd hit that kick and, and everyone's got a different percentage of in terms of their ability to hit those kicks. So, yeah, we just work around each other and, and there's definitely a, a lot of trust in the group now and we're starting to see that on game day. Do you actually, um, like on the ground, I know it's intense and high high pace and all the rest of it, but do you actually put place yourself on the ground uh, depending on who's got the ball? Like, say, if uh, uh, Smith has got the ball, you're happy that he's going to kick at 60, but maybe someone else like... Uh, Laddie, you might uh, lead in a little bit closer. Does it get to that extent, or is it all more, a bit more instinctive? 
Uh, you, you do think about those things. I mean, if it's more of a, I guess, more of a slow play, I mean, when we're just kicking it up the line, yeah, you you definitely have to adjust for, for blokes who can kick it 60 as opposed to those who just kick it 45 to 50. But I guess that's more for the, the Ruckman who are, are placing themselves down the line than, than us mids more than anything. Yeah. And um, obviously Hawthorne are a, a team that likes to, like to crowd up um, and uh, put pressure on the ball carrier. And they obviously like to possess the ball as well when they've got it. Uh, so uh, I guess it's been uh, emphasised perhaps this week, um, disposal efficiency uh, even more so. Yeah, well, I think um, Hawthorne have been the pinnacle of uh, sort of that kick mark and, and disposal efficiency over the last three, four years. So that's something that, that we've worked on. And, and yeah, definitely this week, if you can... Um, yeah, obviously keep the ball out of their hands. It'll go a long way to winning the game. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, um, I noticed that you had a bit of a finger issue uh, last weekend. Someone, a runner, come out and tell you to pull your finger out or something? Or uh, how is the finger? <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was my hand. I just uh, I got a, a, um stood on, actually. So oh, right. that wasn't pleasant. I had a, yeah, a few stud marks in my, in my hands and on my knuckles. So. But no, it's come good now. Um, all good. Yeah, all good to go. Yeah. Just um, one thing that, uh, to following on what we were talking about before, um, and Pike mentioned it last week in the in the presser after the game, it looks like we're playing a little bit more flexible. Um, if you if you look over the, the games that we've played so far this year, certainly the Sydney game seemed to be a little bit different than uh, the first couple. Um, is that something that just happens on the fly based on the opposition or did you guys go out with a slightly tweaked game plan against uh, Sydney? Yeah, we we uh, do, I guess, an opposition meeting every week and, and the behind-the-scenes work that goes into every game is, um, yeah, is very in-depth now. So we've got coaches who... Uh, relay all that that information from from the games before, and then we'll tweak the game plan in terms of yeah the opposition we come up with um, each week. I mean, yeah, some some teams play totally different to others, so yeah, we we're always going to go in with a, a, occasional different strategies in terms of the way we want to move the ball or in the way we defend. So yeah, that's that's definitely something we look at during the week and and study, I guess, in terms of opposition teams. Yeah, a couple of a couple of the commentators did uh, mention our uh, forward entries, uh, forward fifty entries were slightly different, and it also seemed to be um, we were just um, uh, not rebounding so much off half back, but trying to crowd the uh, the middle a little bit more. Would that be a fair call? Yeah, I mean Sydney moved the ball so quickly uh, through the middle of the ground, and and yeah, that was something we definitely looked at doing was um was just slowing their ball movement up and, and then attacking from there. So that seemed to work pretty well on the weekend. Now we've got some we got an American guy on our boards, um, and he actually knows a little bit about footy. He's not an Aussie, he's not an expert, he's actually a, a, a Deceppo. Um and he put up a question asking whether whether the midfield as a group have kind of got a bit of steel about them this year to prove a point given the uh, defection of um, Patty um, or whether it's just, you know, change in coach, change in game plan that uh, has seen a, a, a pretty cohesive un- unit come out under the park this year? Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> to be honest, we don't, we don't talk about Patty too much. I mean, <laughs> yeah, what's done is <laughs> what's done. Is done. Um, I guess it's the media who tends to bring it up more than anything. Um, but yeah, as, as a group, I mean, we we started a journey last year, I guess, from the start of the year. And then I think what Walshie sort of brought down to us is, is definitely, obviously last year was something, but we've improved again on it this year. And and Pikey's, yeah, just built on that as well. So we, we built a really good baseline last year. And, and now the group's played a few more games together and, and we've brought in some new guys as well who have come in, like Seedsman, who's come in and played a role for us. So, yeah, I think there's just a, a good feeling about the group and a, a good trust amongst the group at the moment. Now, how good did you feel when the announcement was official that the sub vest was going to be scrapped for this year? But also, I heard that there was a little secret Santa that went on amongst the players and somebody might have given you a sub vest as the present. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that is correct. Um, for my secret Santa this year, I got the sub vest, <laughs> which is a... Uh, 
bit of a laugh, but yeah, um, I mean, well, did, I think didn't you already have eighteen? Yeah, I think yeah, I think I had eighteen or something like that. And yeah, I had the record for the Crows, that was for sure. So at least that's something I'll take out of uh, my career at the end. I, mean, I think there was whispers about uh, the subvest going sort of to the middle of the last year, and and yeah, that was um, yeah something that. I was pretty excited about. I mean, yeah, it yeah, definitely gives me a bit more opportunity, and yeah, it's uh, it's been nice to come in and actually play a couple of full games, which is good. Now, did you figure out who was your secret Santa yet? Was it Griggy? Uh, yeah, no, it was Matt Crouch. <laughs> <laughs> those, you know, those Crouch boys. <laughs> <laughs> Do they actually uh, crack on at training, or is it pretty sedate? Uh, I've seen a couple of uh, little bits of training, but no, nah, they're not. They're not as bad as everyone says they are. They're, um, and they tend to be pretty tame. Older and wiser. Yeah, that's it. Jared, can I just ask you a question? Um, just about you, you got a lot of admirers out there, just um, in relation to your dedication to the club and the fact that you've been, you know, there quite a while, and and, and it hasn't it hasn't come easy for you to break into the side. Can I just ask? you a little bit about your journey, if you can just uh, explain to the listeners just what it's been like to, um, to have to, I guess, to slog hard and to actually um, um, you know, really fight over a number of years to try and get into the position that you are now. Yeah, I guess it was, um, yeah, it was a tough few years there, uh, sort of in and out of the side and and with the sub coming in, it, yeah, it made it really hard to cement a spot. But, I mean, I love the footy club and I love being here and at, um yeah, at no stage where I, I did, I really want to just walk away from it all. And, and um, yeah, I guess it's it's nice to, um, yeah, finally get in the side, but I'm by, by no means am I submitted my spot yet. But, yeah, it's just it's good to be in a position where I'm, I'm playing good footy and, I guess, enjoying my footy because there's probably periods there where it was, it was pretty tough in, in terms of, um, yeah, just constantly in and out. But, yeah, it's, it's been a good start so far, so fingers crossed that it'll, uh, it'll keep going. Was it was it primarily was it primarily the football club or was it something about the city that you you know you, you're obviously quite happy living here was it um, or was it just a combination of a number of things that made it easy for you to just continue your journey here? Yeah, I, I guess the, it's it's a very good footy club there. It's um, it's built around good people. There's a lot of good people at the club, and and they've got some good mates here. And I guess being from Victoria, it would it would have been easy to go back, but. I mean, I, I was enjoying my footy, whether it was yeah, in and in and out, and I guess yeah, it was a number of things that led me to stay. But I mean, yeah, I'm I'm now yeah, obviously it's it's probably paid off slightly at the moment, and as long as I can keep going and, and enjoy my footy, I'll I'll be happy. Does the senior senior blokes get around you when you're sort of on the cusp there, like you and Griggy and a few others are sort of a little bit in and out, rolling night. Um, do they get around you and encourage you and, and you know help you to keep pushing through? Yeah, I mean we've got we've got a good uh, good leadership group at the club. Um, yeah, blokes like Sloney, Tomo, Tiles, Tex, they're all they're all terrific blokes and they're always there to have your back. And I mean like Tommy Lynch is someone who probably went through it as well at the start of his career, so he's someone I've spoken to as well. And yeah, it's just all about persistence, really. I mean. There's always going to be a spot opening up here and there. I mean, it's such a tough game these days. So, I mean, by no means can you take your foot off the pedal and let someone else take that spot. So, yeah, once you get there, you just got to hold on and, and yeah, just keep playing well, really. Now, we interviewed um, David McKay a couple of weeks ago and we asked him a couple of questions and we thought we'd sort of stick with those questions and see what different if we get any different answers. The first one we <laughs> yeah. wanted to know was, Who's the best ledger on the training track? Uh, the best ledger, I'd say, is probably Tex, the captain himself. <laughs> he's um, <laughs> he's very, very good on the lift old Tex. Yep, so that's exactly the same answer. And the <laughs> other one is because the news the news week um, about the time when we interviewed DMAC was about sleep room um, that's been sort of expanded down at the club. Who's the one person when you walk into the sleep room, you kind of tend to turn around and walk straight back out of because you know you're not going to get a rest? Oh, okay. So the bloke that would talk so much. Um, <laughs> I guess Maddie. Maddie <laughs> or snore. Maddie Yench, Maddie Yench was that, that bloke that um, was uh, 
always in your ear, but uh, at the moment, oh, who would it be? Probably Charlie Cameron. Oh, there's a <laughs> there's very, left field. Oh, that's a new one. Yeah, he's um, very chatty old Charlie, yeah. <laughs> uh, we had Chief uh, from D Mac, so uh, fair to say, it'd be oh yeah, second. that's yeah, that's that's a very close second. Yeah, There's not a lot of sleep around old Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, on on that note, is there a little redhead collective going on? Do they kind of stick together as a little band, or all the little redheads we now seem to have at the club? Uh, it is quite funny, actually. When um, yeah, one of them gets picked on, they all start piping up. Um, yeah, they kind of do stick together. But it's almost a, it's almost a race at the club now. <laughs> yeah, it's either the Reds or the Rorys. So yeah, Jared Lyme with you know sandy brown hair. How are you going to stick out, mate? With pink boots uh, or yeah, something? There's plenty, uh, there's plenty of uh, yeah, sort of brown hair and some six foot blokes at our footy club. So <laughs> yeah, I'm quite happy the way I am. I don't really need to stand out. <laughs> Hopefully that's what you do the talking. Yeah, no, nicely. I have to say, Joe, one of my one of my favourite players, Rory Atkins, seems to be establishing himself on the side. Is is he as annoying as um as he might possibly seem to be? Uh, just one of those guys, almost in the gench mould. Yeah, he uh, the old rat we call him. Um, <laughs> he's uh, he's quite a funny guy. He's uh, very good on at a, at a prank or two. He um, he does enjoy getting under black skins, but. No, nah, he's um he's probably not as bad as Matty Edge. <laughs> I mean, in a, on a slightly serious note, it does seem like there's really good camaraderie at the moment at the club and a pretty tight knit group. And obviously, the events of last year play a part in that. But do you reckon the club's as united and tight as it's been in your time there? Yeah, I think um, obviously the club's been through a lot. Um, I've only been there for six years, but um, yeah, we've had we've had a lot go on, and it's certainly brought the group the group closer. And and yeah, at the moment, I guess we're a very yeah tight knit group, and and yeah, seeing that we've been through what a lot of uh, other football teams would uh, would never go through, it's it's certainly made a difference. Yeah, Joe, yeah, we're we're really really grateful for the time that you spent. We know it's a short week, and you've just come off the track and. And um, you've got uh, quite a bit on your plate. So we're really, really grateful that you've been able to spend a, a few minutes with us, um, um, giving us uh, some of the insights for the club. So, um, so so thank you very much, Joe. We, we, we do appreciate it. No, no, no problem at all, guys. Happy to do it. Loving your work, mate, this year. Keep it going. No worries. Thanks, guys. Pleasure. Take Thanks, care. Mate. All the best for Friday. Thank Thanks, you. Joe. See you later.